Hi, my name is Alicia and I'm originally from the northeast of England, but I'm currently living in North Wales. I have been doing hand embroidery for about three and a half years now, and I started doing hand embroidery after being diagnosed with chronic regional pain syndrome and chronic fatigue syndrome. During that time, I lost a lot of the hobbies that I could previously do, and I set out to find a creative outlet for myself. Um, and after going to many day classes and learning off the internet, I found that I loved the process of hand embroidery and I've continued to do it ever since. Much of my work depicts wildlife and nature as I have a huge passion for conservation and environmental sustainability. This definitely influences my work and the materials that I use. I love the variety of colours within nature and the different colour palettes that can be created from them. I also really love animals and I definitely aim to include many endangered species in my work as I find these to be the most interesting but also the most vulnerable and I hope through my work I can raise a bit of awareness about them. I loved realism in other artists work and I definitely aimed to achieve this within my own. I use a technique called thread painting also known as long and short stitch to create different textures within my work. The technique is especially effective for fur as it requires the blending of many colours together to create texture and movement. I also do use other techniques within my work to create things such as leaves and flowers, which is really fun to do as it creates a very textured and, and tactile surface to my work and gives the work depth as well. I also just love the feel of it to touch. To create my pieces, I start off with a reference photo, which I've taken myself on my camera, on my phone, and for other wildlife that I don't have access to, um, I use a variety of books and magazines to take reference from. I then do a simple sketch and they are very simple as I find that when I start to embroider I often add and take away elements so it's much easier for me just to embroider the detail in as I go along. This is my sketchbook where I keep all my sketches in um, and I just pull out the sketches that I want to use when I'm ready to embroider them um, and as you can see they're quite they're going to be quite simple outlines because um, I just like to add in the detail later. Um, sometimes I include the colour codes of the DMC threads that I think will be good to use and I sometimes just add in detail that I think will be good. I like to include these types of sketches where they're just um, singular sketches so it means that I can pull them out and change the composition of them into different pieces um, so they can be placed in different areas and different ways um, it just makes it a bit easier to transfer as well if they're smaller pieces it fits under the fabric better I then get to choose a colour palette that I'm going to use for the piece and I do this by looking through a DMC thread book which shows all the colours together so I can easily compare and contrast them to find the correct colour palette. I then choose fabric to match and I like to use fabric that's from charity shops or has been donated just to be more sustainable and environmentally friendly. And then transfer the design onto the fabric and start to do the embroidery. This is one of my pieces that I did earlier this year. Um, as you can see there is thread painting um, all of this is all thread painting, the whole of the panda, and then there's other elements obviously, so there's blanket stitches and couching, um, the green thread is couched over felt um, to make it a bit more 3D and stand out a bit, um, and then this is also using felt, um, and I've embroidered over the top of it. Initially when I started this piece I wasn't sure how to incorporate all the flower elements part of it but first off I did a sample piece which allowed me just to look at the different stitches that I would use and how I would use them so I looked at how I could make it a bit more 3D and um, add those effects so I started off couching over fell and then from that I thought oh, I could do this part of it where it's a bit flatter but it still has a bit of depth to it. And then looked at other ways I could incorporate different stitches into my design. So for these flowers I used thread painting but I wanted to make it a bit more textured than that. 
Um, so I used a turkey tassel to make the middle. And for these, I used French knots in the middle and just singular chain stitches um, to make the flowers. I quite like the contrast of the different types and effects that they created and I wanted to incorporate this in my piece. After finishing my sample, I then drew out the panda just so that I had an idea of the size and shape that it would be. Um, and I just used watercolours just to mark out the, the white and dark areas, just to have an idea of what it would look like. And the only element that I drew out was the flowers because they were a lot bigger than in my sample piece, so I wanted just to make sure that I got that right. And then the first bit that I did was the felt, because these are very large pieces in the design, so I just cut them out and stitched over them. And that gave me the ability to look at the other elements I had in my sample piece and see how I could incorporate them, such as bending them around the felt that was already placed there. I decided to place all my flower elements in a circle because in my research I like that a lot of Chinese gods and goddesses are depicted with circles or halos around them and they have many different meanings depending on the god or goddess that you looked at and I thought that it would definitely add another element of meaning to the piece. When choosing my colours I looked at typical Chinese flowers um, and took reference from them so a lot of Chinese flowers are red and pink um, so I tried to incorporate this into my design um, and then when choosing the colours for the panda I looked at reference books and photos such as this one um, and just to look at the colours and how I would blend these colours together. I looked at my DMC thread chart just to um, pick out the colours that I thought would best match um, so I would look at my reference photo and um, my sample as well and just choose colours that I liked um, and pick out those colours. I chose a light blue fabric to sew onto because I wanted to use a lighter colour to allow um, these elements to stand out but I didn't want a white as otherwise the panda wouldn't stand out um, and I think that it worked well with the greens and the pinks and the silvers. I definitely face barriers to being a full-time creative person, um, mainly due to my health and my fatigue that I have. But I do find that my embroidery has been an escape from that and has allowed me to have downtime to myself um, and is definitely therapeutic and relaxing to do. So when I do have bad days or rest days, I'm still able to do it, um, even if it's very minimal. I love textiles because I love the freedom that I found I had with the needle um, and I just love the feel of textiles and the way it looks. I love that you can touch your work as, as you start to embroider because you are so close to the fabric and the materials that you're working with. I'm definitely motivated by myself to continue to do embroidery as I just love it and like I said it, it gives me an escape and gives me time to myself. Thank you for listening. I hope this has given you a bit more of an insight into what I do and the process of embroidery.